Hello, this is Wes Newman with Autodesk. Today I'm going to be showing you a new tool found in Civil 3D 2016 Pro Pack 3. Uh, we just covered the Traverse Editor and now we're going to be building on what we did there with the Traverse Adjustment. So let's go ahead and move back to the product here. So here is where we left off in the previous video. I showed you how to actually create this Traverse and now we want to load it into the Traverse Editor. So to do that, I'm simply going to uh, push the Load Balance tool. I could also save the uh, file and then load the Traverse Adjustment from the, uh, from the actual menu bar. But I'm going to show you how to use the Load Balance tool. It's going to prompt us to actually save this. So I'm going to call this one uh, Traverse Demo 2. Okay, so now we actually have the Traverse loaded into our dialog. I'm just going to quickly go through all of the options in the dialog. So at the top here, this is really the only user input needed. Um, so we're going to select the Traverse source. Notice here um, it automatically loaded the file that we saved from the Traverse editor. Um, we have our five different inputs here. We've got a start point, an end point, a point of closure. And then we also have an observed direction and closure direction when we're utilizing angular balance. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And so uh, the start point is uh, typically uh, the initial point of the traverse. The end point is typically the very last point of the uh, traverse. And the point of closure, again, is, is typically the beginning point. Uh, we've given you some options there in case uh, you want to actually subset um, on each end the traverse. So if you had some commencing calls um, or if you did uh, angular balance and, and did a foresight on the um, closure for an open traverse uh, and you wanted to subset the end, you can do that as well. Um, those are kind of uh, unique situations. Um, so if we, if we do utilize angular balance, we can toggle that on here. And then um, angular balance, um, is when it's a closed traverse, meaning that you uh, start and end on the same point, you don't need to input an, an observed direction or a closure direction. If it is um, what's called an open traverse, um, where you would foresight on something else that you knew the, the angle to, then you would um, key in the observed direction that you uh, measured and then also the, the, uh, what the closure direction is. And then from that, um, we would calculate the missed closure and apply that appropriately. And so one thing about the angular balance, um, it is basically a adjustment that happens before um, the adjustment you apply down here at the bottom. It's kind of a pre-adjustment. It's a two-step adjustment. It does the angular balance. It looks at the amount of closure um, and applies that angular um, missed closure. Uh, evenly across all legs and then those new calculated legs um, are what's utilized for the adjustment. Okay so you notice what happens when I toggle this on and off um, you actually get another uh, row in both the closure summary and each one of the um, sides here. Okay so that I'm gonna leave that off for right now um, just to make this a little cleaner. You'll notice um, in the closure summary we have the input and it's going to show us our precision and our error distance, um, the error direction, misclosure, angular misclosure, and then we have our, our area and our perimeter. Um, and this, this actual traverse has an arc in it. Um, so we've got two different numbers for the precision, area, and perimeter. Um, if you notice there, the uh, second number after the pipe is the um, number with the arc included. And so what we've done is we've added some functionality to remove the arc and replace it with a, uh, a line so that an adjustment can be applied to it. And that is the uh, primary number that we're looking at here because that's what you're going to apply the adjustment to. But we, want to go to, we wanted to go ahead and show that information with the arc. So um, you won't see that if your traverse doesn't contain um, an arc. It'll just be the, the primary number. And then down here at the bottom, 
Um, you'll notice this is the, the bulk of the dialogue and this shows each leg, shows all the information for each leg, um, shows all the different methods and shows you how um, each adjustment was applied and how each leg was modified. Okay, If we don't want to look at all the different adjustment methods, um, we can come down here to our settings and we can toggle off uh, any one of these. So for instance, if we just want to see uh, compass, which is uh, probably the most common way to balance a traverse, we can toggle that off and get it a lot cleaner and just look at that. And then notice here um, our adjustment to apply. That's going to be, um, those are going to be the available adjustments um, that you've toggled on. So if we want to look at, we'll go back here and, and we'll just turn on these three. I'm not going to turn on Grantline because that's really just applicable for um, open traverses. That's a scale and rotate essentially. And then um, I'm going to move our graphics over so you can see what we're looking at. Um, notice the black line is the traverse, uh, the input traverse, and the blue line is the adjusted one. Um, if we select a different traverse to apply, notice the line color changes for us. Um, that's showing you the it's going to match the same color settings that you have here. Um, this is just so you can see what type of adjustments is being applied uh, quickly here. All right, so notice here um, what we've done here is in this situation uh, we have just corded that arc. If we go over here to settings, uh, there's another uh, type of uh, way that you can stroke in a tan or a line. You can do at PI, and then we have a sub option to extend the tangents. So if the arc is tangent to the incoming or outgoing, it will just go ahead and extend it and make one line out of it. So for instance, if I click OK here, notice we just have one line. And so that's just going to end, end up with four, one, two, three, four legs that we're going to adjust. If I come over here and toggle off the extend, notice what happens here we end up with six legs that we're going to adjust so there's we've tried to make it as flexible as possible uh, depending on how you do your adjustments um, okay so now let's um, let's actually uh, generate one of these reports and show you what that looks like so if I hit generate report we've got two different options we can do the, the just the current one that we've got selected um, or we can do all displayed I'm going to do that and I'm just going to save this okay now we'll just open this up and here is the actual report this looks very similar to the dialogue we try to take all the information from the dialogue and format it to fit in the report um, it's got the standard information from um, your report settings and then uh, we also have the, the input from the user, the closure summary, and each leg, and then actually a, a little view of the adjustment there for you. And then when we actually apply the adjustment, what happens is it's going to uh, prompt you to save a new TRV2 file. This is the same file that we actually generated from the editor. So this file can be loaded up in the editor and you can look at it and uh, utilize some of the point creation tools there if you want to uh, to utilize this file moving forward. You could utilize it just for record information um, and notice what happens. It's going to append whatever type of adjustment uh, name you have to the saved file name that you loaded from. And then once we do that, you'll notice we also get the uh, individual line work. So we've got each, each individual segment that we adjusted is, um, is a line here. And you can utilize that in however you see fit. Um, you could load that up into the Traverse Editor if you wanted to. So with that, that's going to complete the workflow for the Traverse Editor and Traverse Adjustment uh, found in 2016 Pro Pack 3. Thank you for watching.